The Cleveland Cavaliers are expected to go out and make a big impression in free agency with it currently being reported that they are interested in it. A couple of really nice role players. We've obviously heard they've been interested in players such as Derek Jones Jr. in the past, but it is now currently being reported that the Cavaliers will most likely target and could pursue a potential signing with Pat Connington in free agency. And this is being reported by Chris Fetter. What's going on, everyone? And welcome back to the channel. Today, we've got some more NBA news to talk about. Of course, I think this is the pretty interesting one. I'm not exactly too much of a fan of Pat. I think he is an okay player, but when it does come to the Cavaliers, he could actually be a player that, you know, they may potentially look to go out and get. For example, it's no really question at this point that the Cavaliers' main kind of mission is has been to try and really go out and improve their defense. For example, they just weren't liking it at all with John Beeline. They ended up firing John Beeline, you know, hiring JB Bickerstaff, uh, you know, who was their assistant coach, to be their new head coach on the team. JB Bickerstaff and the Cleveland Cavaliers have then gone out and traded for Andre Drummond, who is known to be, you know, one of the best defensive centers in the NBA. I mean, he even got a defensive player of the year um, vote, which is actually pretty insane, even though it is kind of funny. But the Cavaliers are definitely wanting to go out and improve their defense. It looks like they're targeting Derek Jones Jr., etc. now. And a player who's actually got relatively decent defense and surprising hops um, is actually Pat Connington. Now, Pat Connington is 27 years of age, 6'5", 196 centimeters, has mainly played the shooting guard position, I believe, throughout the season with Milwaukee, while also going and playing that small forward position as well. He has played 67 games, 5.4 points per game, 4.2 rebounds on 1.6 assists on 33% from three. Now, He's not a scorer, he's not a playmaker, and he's not really a rebounder or shooter or anything like that. His sole purpose is, you know, to come in and play defense, and that's his main thing. And if he can, you know, improve his shooting, then that would be a massive, you know, a plus. Now, if the Cavaliers can bring in Andre Drummond, which they've done, and can potentially bring in Derrick Jones Jr. and Pat Connington, then that really does fix a lot of the issues that they've been having at forwards, especially with the lack of defense that they've had, you know, going into those positions. But one thing that I think they will definitely need to do is, out of those three players that I just mentioned, let's just say they do sign Derek Jones Jr. and Pat Connington. None of those three players that I just mentioned are efficient shooters. Yes, Andre Drummond has improved his shooting, you know, tremendously from what it was previously at, but he's still not a consistent shooter, and he's like literally 10% from three or something like that. If he could improve that in this offseason and become a shooter, I think that would be very good for the Cavaliers. And let's just say again, the Cavs did sign those two players. Derek Jones Jr., who I believe is under 30%, and, you know, really Connington, who is just above it and 33%. If both both of those players could improve it quite a bit, then that would be really, really good, especially for a player like Darius Garland and Colin Sexton, who are trying to improve their playmaking and, you know, could definitely get there, but they need to have shooters around them, especially shooters that can, you know, be, you know, very sufficient defenders. So they've already got the defense part, you know, kind of counted up for them, but Again, they can get all these defenders all they want, and that would fix the defense issue, but then that would create another issue of potentially not having, you know, enough shooting on the team. But I definitely feel like after a big offseason, if the Cavaliers wanted Connington and Derek Jones Jr. and Andre Drummond to improve their shooting, I definitely feel like all three of these players would potentially go out and do it. Now, Connington, what would he, you know, go on if he was going to get signed on by the Cavaliers? Now, I believe he's actually on like a... I don't even know what his contract is on the box. I'm pretty sure it's very low. But I could definitely see a deal getting done where the Cavaliers maybe offer him two years, which are worth maybe four to five million dollars or something. I would presume maybe something like... It's going to be a random number, like, you know, maybe 4.2 uh, million or something like that. Or more, um, Yeah, maybe 4.5. I have a feeling it's going to be like that, you know, per season. And I definitely feel like that would get the job done for Cunnington. He can go and play the consistent role that he was doing on the Bucks for potentially more money than what the Bucks are most likely going to be offering him at this time being. I can't really see the Bucks offering him exactly too much, and who even knows? Maybe he might even get a bigger role on the Cavaliers. Now, 
the, the not only does the defense get fixed here if they can sign Derek Jones Jr. and Cunnington, but the lack of depth that the Cavs have at f the forward uh, forwards position is absolutely extraordinary how bad it is. For example, they've got Kevin Love at power forward. Yes, he's a very, very good power forward, top 10 in the league. And then they have Larry Nance Jr. at, you know, the backup power forward position. Again, is a pretty good backup power forward. But we've seen that Nance as well, he has a couple of injury issues. Not always does he consistently play, you know, because of the injury issues. Not just as that, yes, their power forward depth is pretty nice, but they will most likely be trading Kevin Love. I could definitely see, you know, the Cavs most likely trading them. So that would mean they'd only have Larry Nance Jr. at power forward. Also at small forward, they would have Jetty Osman and literally no backup small forwards as well. I mean, they played Kevin Porter Jr. there um, and Dante Exum as well a lot of the time at, you know, the backup small forward. I just don't think it makes any sense. Dante Exum is clearly a guard and Kevin Porter Jr., can definitely play, you know, small forward, but he is going to have a very big lack of height, so he may need some help. And bringing in players like Derek Jones Jr., who can definitely play power forward and small forward, and has also shown the ability to switch on centers at the Miami Heat, which I think is pretty outstanding. He is an elite defender in reality, so he would be perfect. He can definitely, you know, add the depth for both of those forwards positions. While also Cunnington, who can play small forward and shooting guard, I believe can definitely, you know, add the depth on that wing type of position as well. So very nice moves by the Cavaliers. Then they can go out and draft their new forward as well, which is either going to be Denny of Dia or Obi Toppin at this point. It does look to be like... But again, this is just perfect for the Cavaliers. You know, one issue I did talk about was the shooting, but there's also issues on, they have a lot of players contracted on their roster right now. Let's just say they do trade Kevin Love. They're probably going to get a couple players back in return for K Love, I would most likely assume. But yeah, they've got a lot of players contracted. For example, Sexton, Drummond, Love, Garland, Thompson, o well, not Thompson, actually, he'll be um, expiring. Um, Osman, Nance, Kevin Porter Jr., Alfonso McKinney, Dante Exum, Jordan Bell. Um, yeah, those players are all, and Dean Wade, that's literally like more than, I believe, 10 players that are all contracted. Jordan Bell can be waived, you know, again, they could waive him really anytime. Um, they don't, I don't think they would care if they've already guaranteed him the money. It'd only be like a million or something like that. And to the Cavaliers, it's probably nothing. Um, Dally's a free agent. I expect them to re-sign him. Matt um, Mooney, you know, he becomes a free agent who I believe was on a two-way deal. Um, Tristan Thompson will be a free agent. K Love, I expect to get traded. There's no, you know, a complete certainty that Alfonso McKinney will be on the roster next season. But he's another player that can play shooting guard, small forward, and power forward. So I would assume he would definitely get the nod to be on the roster next season. But they have a lot of, you know, things to kind of make up. If I was the Cavaliers and I saw the opportunity of signing Derek Jones Jr., Pat Cunnington, etc. But I had players like Dante Exum and Jordan Bell on my roster who are taking up a spot where I think, you know, where I would think the Cavaliers could get someone better. Then I would definitely be no hesitant to waive, you know, players like Jordan Bell, Dean Wade, and Alfonso McKinney, who I don't think are going to be guaranteed to get a spot on this roster. And players like Dante Exum, etc. If they could get a second for him, or maybe, you know, even just a buyout or something like that, I still feel like the Cavaliers would definitely do it, especially if they felt like someone like Derek Jones Jr., who was a lot better of a player, would be available in free agency. So that's just how I feel like the Cavaliers are going to go about it. I think it's going to be extremely interesting to potentially see what's going to be happening. But of course, I would really like to see your thoughts and opinions on this. Do you guys think the Cleveland Cavaliers should go ahead and potentially, you know, sign um, Derek Jones Jr. and Pat Cunnington. As again, they are very interested in Derek Jones Jr. as well. That was all being reported by Chris Vetter as well. So again, they're very interested in both these players. I would definitely really like to know your thoughts and opinions on this all down below. But also don't forget to subscribe to my gaming channel, Emma Iro slash vlogging channels. Um, you know, also don't forget to check out my podcast as well. Um, links for them will all be in the description down below. But as I was saying, I'd like to thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Comment in the comment section down below. And I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.